Liberal Viewer presents. So I finally got a chance to see Michael Moore's new movie, Capitalism, A Love Story, when it came out on DVD this month, and like all of Michael Moore's movies, I really enjoyed it, particularly the parts about the lack of accountability that led to this latest financial crisis, but I didn't completely agree with all the messages in the movie, with one I found especially misleading, save for the last 10 minutes, being something Michael Moore said about the so-called Second Bill of Rights that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt proposed during his 1944 State of the Union address that you can hear in this clip. He asked the newsreel cameras to step into his room because he wanted the American people to see one particular part of his speech. The President of the United States then took the radical step of proposing a second Bill of Rights to the Constitution. And it's those last three words to the Constitution that begin the big mistake here because President Roosevelt never proposed that his second Bill of Rights be added as amendments to the U.S. Constitution. If you just read the text of his 1944 State of the Union address, he specifically said, quote, I asked the Congress to explore the means for implementing this economic Bill of Rights, for it is definitely the responsibility of the Congress so to do. Many of these problems are already before committees of the Congress in the form of proposed legislation, unquote. And you don't have to just accept my interpretation, because one of the leading constitutional scholars in the country, Cass Sunstein, wrote an entire book on this subject back in 2004, titled, the Second Bill of Rights, FDR's Unfinished Revolution and Why We Need It More Than Ever, in which he specifically addressed this issue, writing, quote, Roosevelt did not want to amend the Constitution. He saw the Second Bill not as a legal document for judges, but as a set of public commitments by and for the citizenry, very much like the Declaration of Independence. As Roosevelt deeply hoped, some New Deal reforms have achieved that status, unquote. And that last part is particularly important to show how Michael Moore's mistake goes beyond just erroneously adding three words, because when Michael Moore framed FDR's second Bill of Rights as amendments to the Constitution, he missed the way many of FDR's goals have actually been reached in whole or in part through legislation. Like Social Security, the minimum wage, workplace anti-discrimination laws, or now almost universal health care, and... That's why Michael Moore's concluding argument was really diminished by his mistake, as you can see, for example, in this clip. Roosevelt would be dead in little over a year. He would not live to see the end of the war, nor would there be any enactment of his new Bill of Rights. Michael Moore then went on to list these reforms that were supposedly never enacted, including among them... A livable wage universal health care, a good education. But each of these has been addressed, at least to some extent, by legislation without constitutional amendments, which is why Michael Moore's ultimate conclusion isn't exactly accurate when he argues, None of this would come to pass. No American would be guaranteed any of this. Now, the right to a Social Security pension or a free public education are statutory rights, which are given and can be taken away in laws passed by the U.S. Congress, but they're still legal guarantees, and unlike the guarantees in the actual Bill of Rights to the Constitution, which are limits on the power of the federal government, these economic rights require government to exert power through taxing, spending, or regulating, which is why the premier organization defending the actual Bill of Rights for the last 90 years, the American Civil Liberties Union, has always avoided equating most of these economic rights with fundamental constitutional rights, as then-president of the ACLU Nadine Strawson explained in a 1994 interview in Reason magazine, in which she said, quote, We have never taken the position, despite repeated requests from certain elements within the organization, that you should have a fundamental right to property, that the government should guarantee an income or guarantee a house. However, we have always taken the position that if the government chooses to distribute certain benefits, it may not do so in a way that violates fundamental rights, unquote. And that's the right balance between capitalism and socialism, I think, which is why I think FDR was correct to seek implementation of his Bill of Economic Rights through legislation passed by democratically elected representatives of the people, and why Michael Moore is wrong to try to frame these economic rights as guaranteed constitutional rights, just as those on the other side are wrong who try to claim that enacting such benefits through legislation violates the Constitution by going beyond the power of the federal government, which is an argument the U.S. Supreme Court has rejected since FDR's time, but I want to know what you think. 
Should guaranteed government benefits like Social Security and health care be required as constitutional rights, as Michael Moore argued? Constitutionally prohibited as beyond the power of the government, as some argue on the other side? Or left in the hands of the democratically elected representatives of the people as things stand under current constitutional law? And given that Michael Moore seemed to totally miss these distinctions, didn't Michael Moore's mistake about FDR's second Bill of Rights significantly undermine a major argument at the conclusion of his movie Capitalism, A Love Story? I, YouTube, you decide.